We're going to solve this radical equation. The square root of x plus 1 is equal to the square root of 2x minus 7. In order to do that, we're going to square both the left and the right side of the equation. After we do that, we just have a little bit of work to do, and we find out that x must be equal to 8. I think it's a good idea to take a look at this on the graph on a, on a coordinate plane. And so we'll take the left side of the original equation, set that equal to y, so that we have this new equation y equals the square root of x plus 1 where the domain x is x is greater than or equal to negative 1. We're um, simultaneously on the same coordinate plane going to be graphing the square root of 2x minus 7 where the domain in this case is x must be greater than or equal to 3 and a half. When we plot both of these graphs together, the point of intersection should agree with our solution. So the graph looks like this, where y equals the square root of x plus 1 is the purple curve, and y equals the square root of 2x minus 7 is the brown curve. We can see that, yes indeed, these two um, curves seem to be intersecting where x is equal to 8. So we see on the graph visual confirmation of our solution. We can also check this solution algebraically by substituting x equals 8 into the original equation and we would get the square root of 9 is equal to the square root of 16 minus 7 which is also 9. So 3 is equal to 3. Sometimes radical equations end up with extraneous roots, which means extra roots that actually do not work when you substitute them into the equation. This often happens because you can introduce um, different exponents when you square both sides. For instance, when we square both sides of the equation x plus 1 is equal to the square root of 7x plus 15, we're going to end up having to square a binomial. So on the left side of this equation, we're going to end up with a perfect square trinomial, x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 7x plus 15. If we combine all of the terms on the left side of the equation and set the equation equal to 0, we have x squared minus 5x minus 14 is 0, which factors and gives us the solutions x is equal to 7 or x is equal to negative 2. We need to check both of these new solutions. So first we'll check x equals 7 by substituting it in for x. And as you can see, we'll get 8 is equal to the square root of 64, or 8 is equal to 8. When we check x equals negative 2, we don't have quite so much luck. We end up with negative 1 is equal to the square root of 1. And students sometimes will say, but negative 1 can be a square root of 1. But we're not really solving a quadratic here. We really are not looking for um, two solutions, so we don't take the positive and negative roots of the square root of 1, just the positive, the principal square root. So what we have found is that x equals 7 does work, and x equals negative 2 actually does not work negative 2 is the extraneous root. Some students might not be completely convinced by this, so a graph is a really good idea. Here's our algebraic work where we found the two solu possible solutions, 7 and negative 2. But, and here, when we graph this, what we get is a straight line and a curve. So we're first graphing the left side of the equation, y equals x plus 1, which is linear, it happens to have a y-intercept of positive 1, slope of 1 over 1. The other curve that we've graphed is the equation y equals the square root of 7x plus 15, which has a restricted domain. In this case, x must be greater than or equal to negative 2 and 1 seventh. And you can see that this curve seems to end just a little past negative 2 to the left of negative 2 on the graph and that's where the domain restriction occurs. Now you can see that if there was no domain restriction and we didn't and 
and we actually had a full parabola that would be centered uh, horizontally on this graph. The brown curve would be going around and would intersect the purple line somewhere where x is equal to negative 2. But you can clearly see that there is only one point of intersection of these two curves. And that would be over here where x is equal to 7. The negative 2 root does not appear on the graph and therefore is extraneous.